Hey guys, welcome to the shop and we're getting ready for the holidays by making me a present. That's right. So, what are we doing? Well, we are about ready, oops, we are about ready to go to work on this old Archcraft arch top. Now, you'll remember that the last episode I did was called Worm's Guide to Cheap Arch Tops. And if you didn't see that, you're going to want to because there's a link to it right up there. And in that episode, we went through these arch tops that you pick up and you think they're cool and you're looking at them and stuff. And then you find out you're in way over your head and you got a piece of junk. Um, if you're interested in these things at all, catch that episode again. Link up there where you see an eye. Um, yeah, that's where it is. And while you're doing this housekeeping... Yeah, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, like that. That's a like. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, first thing is I have to admit something. Anybody that's known me for any period of time will question something and I say and I'll say, do you see a historical marker? Historical marker, yeah, because the first time I'm wrong, you'll see a historical marker. It's going to be that big. Well, guess what, people? It's time to put up the historical marker because in that episode, Worm's Guide to Junk Arch Tops, I showed you this one. I said we're going to do a repair on it and identified as made between 1927 and 1933, and it was not made by the K Company. Well, guess what? It was made by the K Company, and it was made between 1933 in 1937. See that arch craft with a K. So, what does that mean? Not enough to tell everybody that I was wrong. If you keep your mouth shut like you should, I got this ample supply of quarters that I can possibly give you one for the, for the let's say the first person that sends me an email, I might give you one of these. So, Let's move along. Matchbook of the episode? Yeah, that's right. The crying towel. Because I'm going to tell you about some stuff that if you don't listen and you don't watch that episode, you're going to need a crying towel. Next thing I want to tell you about is I want to give you a tip about some music because this is an old guitar and that episode that I keep telling you about, we talked about the importance of being able to resonate your voice and the music out of a guitar and what this one sounded like. Um, but some of the music at that time was Charlie Patton. I want to tell you about this record set. There's four volumes here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I graduated second grade, believe it or not. And um, this is the known works of Charlie Patton. It was put together by Jack White, Third Man Records. He's uh, pressing records in the studio. Um, he's done some work with C6 Steve and probably Luther Dickinson and stuff. But when you listen to these, there's the crackling and stuff that you would listen to or you would have heard on the original 78. So this is a good one. Now you want to pay attention to where to get these because they can be really expensive or you can find them at reasonable pricing. And I'll try to give you a link below. Something else I'll give you below in the resource section is a listing of the different brands that the K Company made, including this Archcraft. I'll give you a link below. It's a handy file. So I was about to go to work on this and um, share what I'm doing with y'all, which is, remember this had a hole in the back right there. See it? We need to fix that. We also need to do some binding work on this one. But that hole right there, regardless of what I do to fix it, it's going to be obvious. So what we're going to try to do is use something that's kind of period correct. We'll look at this tin. That kind of goes with the, with the time period. Of course, it's not from the time period, but it kind of matches that. So we're going to figure out how to fix the hole. Um, there's some curfing work that needs to be done inside. I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to tackle our first binding job. This celluloid binding is coming apart here. And um, see that right there? This stuff is nasty and dangerous. And somebody dropped this out of the case is what happened. 
and uh, there's also a crack here. So we're going to fix all that. But I got to thinking, you know, as much as I covered in that episode I keep telling you about, I want to see the hit count go up. I'm not making a killing off this. I'm doing this for you, believe it or not. But I got to thinking, you know, have you ever bought one of these? And what is the market like out there when you go to finally buy? And is there anything you can do to avoid that moment where it's like, you know what, this wasn't really represented uh, like I thought it should be, or the price is just ridiculous. So what do you want to do before you meet in that parking lot? And believe, believe it or not, that's how it happens nowadays, and I'll touch on that in a bit. That's not odd. But when you meet and you're looking at a guitar that somebody thinks is worth 500 bucks because they found it in their grandfather's attic and they think they're sitting on a treasure, how do you avoid going out there and buying something or looking at something and driving all kinds of distance and putting all kinds of time in it? A couple of little tricks you can do before you get there and then I'll show you what you can do when you get there and how to stay out of trouble. There I hit the bench twice. Okay so you're looking at one of these on maybe Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, uh, your local whatever, Reverb, something like that. And you see one of these. Now first thing you're going to do is you're going to set your searches for very specific things. You do not never ever listen to me want to set your search for archcraft don't want to see any of you having one of these because why because they're mine that's right but let's pretend in an imaginary world you would not listen to me and just throw caution in the wind and go ahead and do a search for that in the rare event that one of these would come up your phone would go ding 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 and then you would run out of the doctor's office in the middle of uh uh, of a checkup put your pants on before you do that anyway you look and it's there you can also in these searches set parameters as to how far away it is and stuff like that but say you look at the pictures everything looks good if you don't see pictures of the neck if you don't see pictures of that loud motorcycle that just went by if you don't see pictures of the neck where the neck comes together with the body that right there oops that right there and you don't see pictures of string height that's probably an issue now could be an innocent mistake by the seller who doesn't know anything about this you can kind of tell if that's the issue because you'll see exorbitant prices on something that obviously has some issues but anyway two things you can ask right away that might save you a trip let's go back to our matchbook of the episode the crying towel when you contact a person, you want to say, hey, this neck joint right here, right there, where the heel of the neck meets the body, is there any separation? No. Good. Send me a picture. Ask them to send you a picture. Yes, but very little. How much? I don't know. Well, pick something common like a matchbook. Can you fold a matchbook in half? Will one layer of the matchbook fit in there? Eh. Will two, a double? We're not setting points on a 1970 Ford pickup truck here. We are buying a guitar that might have a neck cut loose. Second indicator of a neck cutting loose is tell them to go to the 12th fret. Count down the neck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right there. Ask them, can you take two quarters, two quarters, set them on the 12th fret and slide them under the strings? Yes. Is there any room above the quarters? Yes, quite a bit. Well, that tells you there's a neck problem. And what you want to do is you want to tell the person, you know what, I'm going to kind of want to look at this and make sure that there's not a neck problem. If they're telling you I could fit four quarters under there, don't even get in the car. And do the people a favor and take a minute and say, hey, listen, I don't want to offend you or anything, but 
first off, if you're learning social etiquette from me, oh, there's probably a huge problem. But next, just kind of tell them, hey, the guitar you've got um, is probably got some neck issues. And what that means is the neck is breaking loose. And when the neck breaks loose, it pivots like this. The strings come up. And then even if you stabilize the neck at that, at the neck, now you saw an episode called Three Dollar Neck Reset. I'll give you a link up there, and I keep going back and back and back to that other episode, Worm's Guide to Cheap Arch Tops, and within there it tells you what happens. But when the strings come up, when you fret it, if the strings are really high, it's hard to fret, and then your notes start turning sharp. So um, when you string up and hit open, it's supposed to be a G, and then your strings are too high and you go to twelfth fret. That's supposed to be an octave above and then it turns into a G sharp and then you're playing the, the guys that are doing fret work instead of all slide they they don't like it so that's kind of a big thing you can get those questions out of the way and again be kind enough to tell the people hey probably got some neck issues it might not be uh, worth what you're talking about and maybe explain to them hey give uh, give old Paul Miro John Powell's guitars a hit and kind of figure out what you got there alrighty so before we really hit the bench, uh, people are asking me, why did you call that episode Worm's Guide to Cheap Arch Stop? Okay, I come out of the oil field. In the oil field, when you don't know what's going on, they call you Worm. Hey, Worm. I remember this guy told me, hey, Worm, where did other Worm go, Worm? And I said, he went to use the bathroom, and he said, eh, your pants and keep working, Worm. And yeah, they treat you like that. But anyway, it's a very dangerous place. And until you can learn your trade enough not to get your fingers cut off throwing chain or something, their word is warm and it's a good natured thing. It means that you really don't know what's going on. And that's why I called it that. And once I my hit count goes up and we start to get the hipsters watching it, then I'll change it to something else. But my intention is to help you, sir. Anyway. Where were we? Oh, yeah, we're going to hit the bench now. And what we're going to talk about is, okay, you've got the double matchbook test. You've got the quarter test out of the way. You've looked at pictures. Again, don't be afraid to ask people to send you pictures. And look, and the time comes where you're going to get in the car, okay? Well, guess what? People who are selling these are not going to have you over to their house so you can see their collection of Gibsons and stuff and Google all their stuff and, and all that because guess what? People steal. Did you know about that? Hey, they've known about it ever since Moses held up the stones and said, Thou shalt not steal. So if someone's saying, I want to meet you at a, a coffee shop or something like that, that's pretty normal nowadays because... We don't have people into our house, and then plus you're buying with, you know, masks on your face and all that kind of stuff. So it's not odd to meet there, but don't let that stop you from checking the guitar out once you get there, because sometimes people just want to—they want to hand it off. Yeah, that's not a drug deal. You're buying a guitar. If you make a mistake, you're going to have a, a lot of money into it, or you're just going to sit there and go, man. Yeah, cry and tell time. So I've got a little kit of tools that I want to talk to you about that I take with me that you should probably have if uh, you're going to do much of this. All right, guys, the day has come. We're in the parking lot of the Ralph's Food King or the coffee shop. And what's the first thing we want to do? Well, we want to bring a case because... Well, if you're going to be buying these guitars, you need to put them in a case. Because the worst thing that can happen is you're driving home, and this thing's floating around, and you got it on blanks or whatever. Somebody pulls out in front of you, wham, and it falls off and cracks. That is exactly what happened to this guitar. It was in this old chipboard case, come fresh out of the attic. Somebody looked at it, picked it up. The case literally fell apart. The guitar crashed to the ground, and the result is this is a break, and that crack all the way there, all the way up to here to where the pit guard bolts in or screws in. Always have a case. It tells people, too, that you're buying guitars. You're there to buy something. You're there to take it home. Um, 
You want to remember, I go out and buy sometimes two or three guitars a day. I'm after the stuff with the F holes. Um, and I may, you may see stuff like this coming out of my shop. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that odd? You're going to see this one come out of my shop. But yeah, I'll build stuff like this and put it together. But the stuff that I want has, let me reach across your plate. F-holes. Always F-holes. I'm looking for F-holes, okay? So what next? Well, they see that you're probably ready to buy. And you know what else you want to announce? I'm the guy with the matchbook and the quarters. Remember me? Yeah, they appreciate that you're the one that asked some questions before you got there and wasted everybody's time. Now what? Now the work begins. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to pull this out, right? You're going to wind the strings up. You're going to put your strings on there. Hey, look, there's a 46 in there. Regular slinky. You know, I got 60s on some of my guitars. So I'm going to throw this on here, and then I'm going to put my, my slide on my finger and give everybody a lesson that, hey, I'm a great guitar player because I'm there to impress you while I'm trying to boost my own self-confidence. No, don't do any of that. This right here. You start winding and playing strings. You want to remember, you don't own this thing yet. If you break it, you're going to buy it. Oh, That's always number one. Don't do anything destructive. Don't do anything that's going to scratch it. Don't do anything. And always ask permission before you do anything. So let's see what kind of things we can do. And I suggest you do do. Do do. First thing, ask permission like, would you shut that damn dog up in the background? I'm trying to film an episode to help my viewers here. Something like that. Watch your tone. But first question, do you mind if I take this out of the case? I have a way to protect it. And you bring these with you. You got some cloths, okay? Don't want to scratch it. So you bring your own cloths. You're ready to go. You're showing respect for the instrument. This cloth right here come off of Richard Sell's sailboat, Great White Buffalo, that movie? Yeah, right there. A little movie trivia for you. Okay, it's out of the case now. We're gonna start off by looking at uh, the stuff we were asking questions about in the first place. Confirm that they told you the truth. Yeah, there's no gap there. That's looking good. How's the action? Well, that looks okay there at the 12th fret. Um, there's the bridges straight, all that stuff that we talked about. One more time, for those of you that refuse to listen, that episode right up there, click the eye, Worm's Guide to Junk, Cheap, Arch Tops, whatever it was. But yeah, you want to confirm that, hey, yeah, I'm glad I came out. I, uh, I like the way this looks. So, remember I told you in that movie, you're going to ask the person, hey, anytime I want to do something... I'm going to protect it. Uh, I'm going to make sure that that what I'm doing, I'm going to explain it to you, and, and we'll walk through this instrument. Okay, we know from the last episode that when this broke, the kerfing underneath here, let's pry this up a little bit. We wouldn't want to do that, but right there you can see the kerfing. It's missing right there, and it's missing all the way to the tail block back there. So there's a piece that goes from about there to there that we're going to have to replace. Now, let's say that this hole was not here and we told the people, listen, I'm going to rattle this a little bit to see if something is loose or coming loose or something like that. And we rattle it and we hear a little noise. I'm going to tell people that, you know what, there's some bracing in here that might be loose and that may be what that rattling is or maybe the kerfing. Well by now somebody might be going, hey, you know what, are you gonna buy my guitar or or is there uh is my social security check gonna get here before we make a deal? So it's easy to take some pictures on your phone. Use mine and just explain. This is kerfing. It glues the top and the bottom together and these are braces and that rattling might be that. So how would we show them and show ourselves that there's not some major concern with this guitar? Okay, another little social cue from Ken. Again, if you're getting stuff from me, you're in deep trouble. But if their instrument is not what 
it worth what they're asking because they just looked it up on the internet. You want to inform them as much as you can and kind of give them a leg up on the next customer if you don't buy it, right? So I hear rattling. What do I do? I pull out my box of tricks. Look at this. Pop this open. I got some handy little gadgets in here. Look at this. This is just for taking with me. So, again, I'm not going to do anything that's going to destroy anything, but let's start with this, okay? It's a light. It's flexible. Step out of the vehicle. It's very small. The neck pivots. It also has a pointer. Ooh, look at that. Let me get this out of the way. Look, I can point at things. I can do cool Pink Floyd light show things on the strings. You see that? This is a must-have because this down in here lights up the interior of the guitar. You can press both of them and say, hey, do you see that number right there? Or whatever, like so. But this is a must-have at minimum. You need one of these because it gets down in here like this. Again, don't be afraid to put the towel across here like this and show respect for somebody's instrument and don't scratch what you're doing. Okay, now, you might be looking at it from this angle, you might be looking at that from that angle, but you really can't really see what you're looking at. So, look at this one. See this? McGarrett 5.0. Okay, this is a telescopic mirror with a light. Ooh, he not pretty. Look at me. Oh, there I am. Awesome. I'll sign it for you later if you print it up. Anyway, it's got a light on it. Look at this. Man for man. Hey, blinded by the light. There you go. Anyway, I can telescope this out like this. I can turn it like this. This is plastic. There's nothing metal. I put this right down the F hole and I can turn it on the bottom and I can light this up and with my little light here I can basically show them what I'm looking at. If there is a, a uh, brace cut loose or the curfing is starting to cut loose I can show them with this mirror and justify what I'm telling them about hey this is either in good shape or it's not and here's kind of uh, my opportunity to educate you about what you might be looking at. Um, in the end, don't be doing this to, to get the price down and don't, and don't be making stuff up. You know, I don't, I don't need that. If I'm going to go to hell, it ain't going to be over a, a $75 arch top, that's for sure. All right, finally, I want to show you something really cool. Let's flip this open like this. You know what this is? Well, if you're over 50, your doctor's wanting to, you to know what this is right here, this little thing it is a camera okay so I pull off the protective cap okay um, there are lights on these things they light up if they don't well you've got remember you got this gadget you can light things up but this will go there's a lot of cable here there's probably 25 feet and you see this part right here this can connect to a computer. This can connect to your phone. Uh, this is an Android connection. They also make Mac connections. And um, you basically plug this into a phone and you work this down into the F hole and you can spin this around and it's like looking at sewer pipe or anything and you can actually see everything about the inside of the guitar. So if you're serious about this stuff, or even making repairs. Remember we did the episode called um, Tore Up Tail Piece where we're having to fix something from outside here in here. Um, I'll give you a link to it right up here. This puppy would come in handy um, and you're going to see me use this on some repairs uh, because I can plug this in. I can use software. It comes with software. And I'm going to give you a link to this specific model down below check that out because I got this to the door for less than $20 so you're just pulling this out you're plugging into your phone and when you finally buy the guitar you know what you have you know what has to be fixed and if you don't buy it you're back to telling the guy hey 
um, here's kind of what's wrong. Here's what it might might take to fix it. Here's what's going to happen with your guitar, and and here's probably a fair price whether you buy it or not. Uh, people are going to be informed, and you're just helping people out, and you're doing an honest day's work. And um, yeah, so one last time, simple folding mirror, easy. Better if it's got a light on it. You can put this down in there, and then use your camera or this here to point things out and real simple stuff take this stuff with you listen here's what you don't want to do you don't want to start taking these body knives these two mac body knives and start prying around in here and that kind of stuff it's just not respectful and you're going to break something off the guitar is worth less than it was so do not do anything intrusive whether you got the people's permission or not and um Alrighty then, watch for this one in another episode because we're going to fix that hole and let's close this episode out. Okay, the next time you see me, we are going to go to work on this hole here. Uh, we're going to put some kerfing in there and um, we are going to think about working on spining and fixing this crack and hopefully this episode has given you enough information to know when you get home that's what you're going to do and you're not finding it after the fact and feeling bad so in summary don't forget i gave you a cool link below to find out who had guitars made by k and when that's below and don't forget about this charlie Patton collection so hey um, I like your feedback. Um, my audience is changing just a bit. The guys that are making cigar box guitars. Hey, some of you have been watching me for two or three years. You're getting way better than I ever was. And I'm starting to watch your channel. If you don't have one, make one. Share your ideas with somebody else. But I'm going into new territory and I hope you can appreciate it. And the ones that are starting to follow me on this stuff, I very much appreciate your comments because it helps me form my content to you, the studio audience. See you next time.